Shalom. Give them all praises to Jehovah, Hashem, Yom Shabbat, Hashem, Yom Kakwadash. And um, I'm going to title this, He Came Unto His Own, as referring to the Israelites. I should say referring to the elect of Israel. Anyway, um, this is a video that I came across, uh, put up by uh, Apostle Gabar. I hope he's drinking water. A lot of water. Drink water. The word is water. And the body needs water. Physical water. Just as the, the spirit needs the, spirit, the, the word, which is water. Water, 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 water. This is inside for him. Uh, he, uh, this, this video, uh, his uh, page is a daily edification for, entitled, He Came Unto His Own, and His Own Received Him Not. I didn't get a chance. I checked out about five minutes of it. And he mentioned something about vocab. I guess vocab did a video on that. And um, I was going to go to vocab. See, I'm, vocab is so insignificant. I'm not even going <laughs> to even try to look look up his videos. Anyway, um, watch this video. Uh, the Apostle Gabar breaks, breaks it down to a T. And uh, you know what? Let me do this. I just want to go directly to the scripture. So we're going to leave this video. But like I said, watch it. So what I'm going to do is go into. Okay, wrong, wrong. Let me do it this way. Actually, blue letter. Blue letter. And I'm going to go to, and this is an old, this is what so-called Christians used to use to justify that the Lord came for everybody. I even went into the uh, commentary on Bible Hub and they said the same thing that is talking about his people. Okay, it says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. You can really read this whole chapter. This, this is a, uh, a great chapter to read going into the beginnings of the Lord. Yeah, right here it says uh, the deity. The, de the deity of what the hell happened? Boy, this, this is all this, boy. Okay, I'm back. It speaks about uh, in uh, the first verse of St. John 1. When you read this, you have to go back to Genesis chapter 1. When it says God created the heavens and the earth, it was not talking about the most. It was not talking about Yahweh. It was talking about his beloved son and the angels, a certain number of angels that created the universe. 
the Most High was mentioned in the second chapter. When it, what does it say? Uh, Lord God. And that word there is Yahweh. And another, another thing is Christians don't understand this. If you get too deep, you drown them. We're basically drowning them. You go to Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 1 and 1 and say, what does that word God mean? They'll say, talking about God, the Heavenly Father, the great I am. It's not talking about the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is in chapter 2, as, a, as I have said. Then it says, uh, the, wit the witness, the witness, John. Oh, and by the way, John did not go off. John did not fall out the truth. That was a controversy about a year ago that uh, the IUIC, the, I, the I, ISUPK said that John fell out the truth. He should have followed the Lord. And they understand the scriptures well enough to know that, that he didn't fall off. He was a fulfillment of uh, uh, Malachi. Malachi, the fourth chapter. So it says that there was a man sent of the Most High whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. The light is Yahweh Shai. To lighten the Gentiles in, in Isaiah, uh, what is that, Isaiah 11, that all men, that all men is talking about Israelite, Israelite men, women, and children, to him might believe, because Esau doesn't believe. Now you had, when you go into the history, you had Edomites that did believe that that followed certain the laws and statutes and commandments and that fought side by side during the siege of 70 AD. They were fighting side by side. These were Edomites fighting side by side against the Roman Edomites because the Romans descend from the Edomites and the uh, Harod, the Herodian dynasty's own personal military. The, the Harod and the Herodian dynasty had their own military, which were Edomites fighting. So it wasn't just the Roman Edomites, it was the Edomites of Harod's family or dynasty fighting against Jake and other Edomites because Edomites wanted to be saved. They wanted to, they wanted to get right with the Lord, but they couldn't at the end of the day. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So we ain't gonna say, get out of here, don't fight with us. They were, they were fighting side by side with us, some of them. So that was, that was a time of confusion. That's a whole nother lesson. Please forgive me. Maybe I'll do a lesson on that. But a lot, of, even a lot of Israelites don't know that, man. That you had Edomites that actually believed. Anyway, it says uh, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, which is our Lord, that all men through him might believe. All men is talking about. Now you can say if you want to get technical, well, it ain't the Lord didn't come for women, didn't come for children, it came for men. Just men, no. The men re refers to men, women, and children of the elect, and then the rest of Israel. Because he, he really came for the elect. That's why he said in St. John, uh, what is that, 17 and 9, I came for them, I came not for the world. In other words, I came for them, he said, I came for the elect. I came, I came not for the whole world of Israel. It says he was not that light. But was sent, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that witness came back again as Abba Bivens. That's why this truth, that's why this, you know that the truth came out of one West. Nine verse. That was the true light, which light lighteth every man 
Israelite man, woman, and child that cometh into the world. What the world right there, I, I'm not even going to click on it. I already know the word there is cosmos. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me go ahead and click on it. Cosmos. What does cosmos mean? And that and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, government, ornament, uh, decoration, ornament, i.e., the arrangement of the stars, the heavens, the heavenly host as the ornament of the heavens. The world, the universe, the circle of the earth, the earth, Inhabit, the inhabitants of the earth, it doesn't mean that. Uh, well, it means that as opposed to another planet. Okay, you can say that the human family, when I talk about the whole human family, uh, the ungodly multitude, the whole mass of man alienated from the most high and therefore hostile to the cause of, of, the, of, of the Lord. World affairs, the... Uh, aggregate of things earthly, the whole circle of the earth could, they went off. But the best definition would be these first one or two. Uh, an apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution or the government. You know, you have the Russian government, you have the United States government, you have the Chinese government, you have these, which are separate worlds. So that word cosmos means a certain segment of people or government, which are the Israelites. Let's come back. Okay. 19, the testimony of John. And this is the, the record of John when the Jews sent uh, priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Yeah, because he was, uh, there were masses of people coming to get baptized. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. Because they were looking for the Messiah at that time. Just, what, just like we're looking at uh, the prophecies, the new prophecies. Uh, what is that? Uh, Isaiah 42 and 9, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can put that in there. That there were a certain amount of prophecies that took, took place already. So now we're looking for newer prophecies. So are we looking for the prophecy of the Lord coming back for the first, coming to, to the earth for the first time? No. That happened over 2,000 years ago. We're looking for him, as they say, they, we're looking for his second advent. Uh, it says, uh, and they asked him, what, uh, what then? Art thou Elias, which is Elijah? And he saith, I am not. The reason why he said he was not because he didn't know that he was Elias. All he, the most I sent him and put the spirit on him to, um, you know, open the way for our Lord. So he never went off. He did his job and the most I took him out to the, the scene, so to speak. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Then, say, then said they unto him, who art thou? That, he, that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What, and anytime they come up on you, certain group, group of people that ask you certain questions, they were sent. <laughs> they didn't come on their own. They were sent. Um, what sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, which is the fulfillment of Isaiah. I believe that's Isaiah. Uh, for, somebody could put it in. I believe it's somewhere in the 40s. Somebody put it in. I'm not going to go look for it. It says, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make 
make straight the way of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, as said the prophet Isaiah. Now let me try something. They might even give you the precept. Let's see. You know what? Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. I'll do it this way and then come back. Oh, no, 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 no. Take this one off. Uh, let me do it this way. Is the Bible hub? And even in the Bible hub, they, they say that he came for his, his own people. So how deep is vocab? Is vocab spoke on it? Okay, Isaiah 40, verse 3. Boom, I knew it was in the four, Isaiah 40 something. Uh, it says, uh, It says cross reference cross references a voice of one calling prepare the way for the Lord in the wilderness make a straight highway for our power for our power in the desert now that doesn't sound like a King James quote but it says uh this is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, that's Matthew 3, verse 3, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, preparing the way. That's John. John never went, John the, the, John the Baptist never went off. He did his job, but he was taken out of the scene. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare, Mark 1, verse 3, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Who made who made straight paths path for him? John. So the actual prophecy is um, Isaiah forty verse three. Okay, where are we? John 1, verse 3, 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of Yahweh, as said the prophet Isaiah. So he said he wasn't John or Elijah, but he said he, he was sent to make a straight path for the Lord, which is the fulfillment of Elijah, Malachi 4. So you 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 men at uh, leadership at ISUPK, they need to go back and read that because they're clearly going off. Okay, where am I? Anyway, let's go to the uh, tenth verse, uh, ninth verse. That was the light. That was a true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, which are Israelites, cosmos, Israel. John 3.16, cosmos, Israel. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as, here comes a body of believers pursuing According to uh, vocab, he said he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, them gave he power to become sons of the, of the Most High, even to them that believe on his name. They don't believe on his name. Okay, let me do this. Let me go back to the the hub. Uh, 
Okay, where did I go to? Uh, let's go to Ellie Cott's commentary for English readers. His own is is not is neuter, and the and the same word which is used in John nineteen verse twenty seven. Then said he to the disciples, "Behold your mother, behold your mother," and from that hour that disciple took her to his own home, own, what does Matthews one twenty one say? Thou shalt call his name, it says there Jesus in English, but the word there is Yahushai, which literally means he's, he deliverer. Um, and, and he shall save his people from their sins. So who, who is he? Who, who, what nationality was the Lord? An Israelite. Of the tribe of Judah. He didn't come for Judah. He came for the, 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 the whole house of Israel. It has rendered his own home. What then was the, the home? It is distinguished from the word of John 1 verse 10. He was in the world, in the world. The world is talking about Israel. He made Israel. And it cannot, and it cannot, but be that the home of Jewish thought was the land. <laughs> Talking about Israel, they're using the word Jewish, but the word should be Israel. For Israelites, the city, the temple bound up with every messianic hope. We are the temple. Traces of the abound of the Jewish scriptures, Israelite scriptures. Uh, behold, I I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way. That's John. John never fell out the truth, and the Lord, and the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come. This is for Israel. To his temple, his temple is referring to the Israelites. Even the messenger of the covenant. We're going to receive both covenants. Esau never received or any of the nations never received the covenant. Read, read Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Read uh, Hebrews uh, uh, 8, verse 6 on down. It's only for the Israelites. So he came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. It's talking about the people that he grew up in. I'm going to show you that. Whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. It goes on to say, the Lord whom we seek uh, suddenly come to the temple, uh, his own, and the second clause is masculine, the dwellers in his own home, meaning his people, who were his own people, his own people. You know, you in the Olympics, and in, on in, you in Japan, and then uh, you win the gold, and then you saying, well, what's in your mind? What do you want to do now? You say, I want to go back home, meaning you want to go to your community. You want to go to your house. You want to go to your friends. So it ain't talking about Edomites. It ain't talking about other nations. It said the special object, the special object of his love and care. He don't, he don't give a shit about the other nations. And so we turn from the coldness of a strange world to the warmth. The strange world is right here, the, 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 the valley of the shadow of death. This is why Jake be getting shot up, because you're not a part of this world. Jake be getting shot up left and right, man. You got all these situations with these police. Because this is not your world. This, this place was set up, this is the prison. This is a prison. This is a, a, a open air prison. You know, you talk and worry about going to a concentration camp. You're in a concentration camp, dude. We turn from the coldness of a strange world, the shadow of the valley of death, 
Babylon the Great, or wherever you scattered. A strange world to the warmth and welcome of a loving home. Ultimately, that's the kingdom of heaven. It speaks about a city to come. The world knew him not, meaning the Israelites that came up about, around him did not accept him. And he came to his own, and they, and they despised him. They despised him. Now, let me go here. I want to get Matthew. Okay, Matthew chapter 13, I'll start from 53. And it came to pass that when Yahawashai had finished these parables, he departed thence. And, and when he, you know what, let me do this. Let me do this. Okay, this, the title is Yahawashai Revisits Nazareth. So you can read the precepts on it, uh, Mark, uh, uh, Mark six verse one and six, Luke four verse sixteen to thirty, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go into Luke four verse sixteen. It says, um, "And it came to pass that when Yahweh had finished these parables, he departed thence, and when he was coming to his own country, all right, it's not talking about the whole world." I mean, it's, well, I'm sorry, it's, talk, it's not talking about the whole world of Israel. It's talking about a certain segment of Israel of Israelites that knew him. He taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence hath this, this man, this wisdom, and these mighty works? Because he was just a regular guy. They saw him as a kid. They saw him growing up. And he grows up as a man, and he's saying that he's a Messiah. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this, and not is not his mother called Mary, and his brother James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? Now James and Judas actually became part of the twelve. Christians don't know that. Joseph and Simon did not come into the truth. But did that mean that they weren't Israelites? They were Muslims selling bean pies on the corner? No, they, they knew that they were Israelites. They didn't come into that special fold of discipleship under the Lord. So two of the Lord's brothers were actually of the 12. James, the brother of the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, Jude uh, wrote the book of Jude, which is one chapter long, 56 verse. And his sister, so he had sisters pursuant to his verse. Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. They were, he came unto his own, in his own. These are the people in his neighborhood. Ain't that, ain't that, um, uh, Ain't that Mary's boy? Ain't that Joseph's son? That's what they were saying. But how do you, how does man get so smart? That's that's that was the attitude. It was it was. Now remember, let's go let's go back up. The Lord visits Nazareth because he was raised in Nazareth. This is not hard, man. It says, uh, 57 verse, and they were offended in him, but the Lord said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. What did he mean by in his own country? 
Nazareth. Nazareth. Because the people around the rest of Jerusalem or Palestine didn't know him. He had to become famous. It says, and they were offended in him. But our Lord said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house, meaning where he lived at, his neighborhood, his hood. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Whose unbelief? The people that knew him, the people that they saw him growing up. This is not hard vocab. Even, even the, um, the commentary tells you that it's talking about his people. I'm going to go back to that. And they were offended, and they were offended in him. Well, hold up. Wait a minute. Fifty-four verse again, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in the synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, "Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works?" Because he was he was performing miracles, and they were still talking shit about him. It says, "Uh." And he did not many mighty works in Nazareth because of because <laughs> works be, there because of because of their unbelief. Whose unbelief? The people that knew him in, in that region of Nazareth. This is not that hard. Matter of fact, let me go back to. I don't want to stay, this, stay on this too long. I'm trying to go out and make a couple of shekels. Anyway, uh, where is it? Where's the other commentary? Okay, let me breeze through this one. Cambridge Bridge for schools and colleges unto its own. This is uh, St. John 1, verse 11, unto its own. In the Greek, the first own is uh, uh, neuter. The second is masculine. And, and this difference should be uh, preserved. He came unto his own inheritance. Inheritance. It's talking about Israel. Read, uh, read Romans 8, around about the 16th verse. It said, we're going to receive the same inheritance as he received. And his, and his what? And his own people. He came unto his own inheritance and his own people received him not. This is what the commentary is saying. So now let's go here to Luke 4, verse 16 to 30. And he came to Nazareth. This is Luke's account. We just finished reading John's account where he had been brought up. And, and, as, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up before to read. And there was, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he... And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The poor represent Israel when the poor state. He, he, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted of Israel, to uh, preach deliverance to the captives, Israel, Isaiah 14, 1 and 2, and recovering of sight, spiritual sight, to the blind, to, uh, to, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Who bruised them? The Romans at that time. Uh, it says, uh, for the violent shall take it by force, Matthew 11. To preach the acceptable year of uh, Yahweh, 
And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of them and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So what, well, when he said that, what was he saying? I'm the Messiah. That's what he was saying. And all bear him witness and wondered at the, the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, then they, they became niggers. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Ain't that boy Joseph's son, the carpenter? Now, what I did was I clicked on it. Let me go back into it. Okay, 22nd verse. Luke 4, verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of, out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, ye will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Uh, what, uh, whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, and he, con he condemned Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. What was his country? Was it Bethlehem? Nope. He was born in Bethlehem. The, the, his own country was the part of Palestine or Israel called Nazareth. And that's why the wicked scribes and Pharisees said, well, he, he can't be the uh, Messiah because uh, somebody could put that in the comment section too. I'm not going to go for it. Go look for it. It says, uh, he can't be a Messiah because he was born in Nazareth. Now, he could have told him, no, I was actually born in Bethlehem, fulfilling that prophecy, but I, they, they, they figured he was going to grow up in Bethlehem. No, the prophecy was he was going to be born in the city of David, Bethlehem, which means Biathlecon, which means house of bread. It says, but I tell you of a truth, many widows... Let me read the 24th verse again, and I'm getting ready to close it. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country, which was the Israelites, the neighbors in the land of not Bethlehem, but uh, Nazareth. Uh, but, but I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was, a, was Eli, uh, Elias sent, save unto uh, 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 Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. In other words, um, Elijah didn't go to all Israel. He went to this woman unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of, um, I guess that was Elisha, Elisha, Elisha. It's spelled different. The prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. So what is he saying here? That he, that he came for a certain segment of Israel. And ultimately, that was uh, the, the apostles. And then the rest of the elect. Because the rest of Israel will be destroyed. But they're going to come back anyway. Let me read a little bit more. 20, 28 verse, Luke 4 verse 28. And all, that, and all they in the synagogue or the temple when they heard these things were filled with wrath, anger, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the 
of brow the hill whereon, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They were showing the Lord hate. And these were Israelites. Let's go back to the 16th verse. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Not born, brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And then when he read the prophecy, he said, this prophecy has been fulfilled. So what he said was, I'm the Messiah. Then what did they do? What was their response? What were these niggas' response? This is what it means by he came unto his own, his own received the time. It says, uh, 29 verse, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow, the brow of the hill whereon their, their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They were going to throw him down, head. they were going to pick him up upside down and throw him down so his head could hit a stone. They wanted to kill him because he made that statement. And them same niggas in Nazareth are here today, and they're going to get fired up by the Most High. They said, but he passing through the midst of them went his way. He got out of there. Anyway, um, I'm going to close on that, on this one. And with that, I'm going to say, uh, Shalom.